right, so I am here with Mr. Ace out there. Right over there. Doop. And uh you know, I figure it's gonna be summer, so I'm gonna be pretty much naked all summer. And uh I hear dad bods are hot and in right now. Just kidding. But uh, I'm here and at uh, Meadow House and looking to basically just share what we're doing with the recording studio and uh, just kick it off with a trailer because there's going to be basically a proposed uh, plan in place so that we can get the archaeology, we can get our cannabis moving forward um, without me dragging it down so that... Um, we also have, um, you know, just a lot of progress in different spaces where, um, you know, it's one of those things where it was a really brutal year and a half, um, helping my neighbor, um, out of her mall house or 1800s house that collapsed in on her and she had pipes break and basically I was the only one that she would let into that house and she had been hoarding pretty intensely. Um, and I didn't really share this publicly, uh, but it really dragged me down mentally in a massive way. Um, and it led to a creative piece coming out of that, which is my first horror film or well book, however you want to write it. Um, you know, it's going to be a piece. I don't actually, maybe it's just like a sort of, a um, a neural net plugin that can create, um, uh, scenes of terror for one's uh, experiential delight at times when they're seeking that media. It's all new stuff coming, but like it's going to be different than living in a virtual world where you're tethered to a desktop still in a virtual world. So I'm not professing to be into bioengineering and all of the um, brain augmentation of various implants and things like that, but I think it's a fascinating space ahead. Uh, and creatively, with the confluence of AI, I want to know more about it. But um, as I'm hanging here in the Hunger Ravines, and we got all kinds of folks stopping by, and we're basically um, moving things forward uh, on the archaeology front. So in the process of doing that, we're going to be able to record it and video capture all of these unveilings. So if you look over there, I know I can't zoom in from this, this reversed view, but, um, you know, the, the goal is for us to really start to understand and tell that story as it relates to all of uh, the Americas. And I think it's going to be um, a fascinating um, discussion about knowledge and intellectual property and how cultures will take it and consume it and destroy it. I'm also realizing I got to stain this um, and we're on the other side, the west side of the house here. There's just a lot going on that we got to clean up and whatnot. But from this site here, you know, I have a theory that it connects to Machu Picchu. Um, along a line across the Worcesters that also goes the entire length of Vermont um, and down through Massachusetts, Connecticut, Long Island into the Atlantic Ocean where I posit mm, even previous to this glacial uh, axial precession round there was uh, a civilization that engineered that um, because it is the magnetic north to south line and I think that the Bermuda Triangle hosts a bunch of uh, magnetite and very magne magnetically charged volcanic uh, stonework that would have been along that line. Um, you know, whether it's the Bimini, uh, there's just a lot of theories as to how that, you know, unfolded, but all of those are sort of offshoots on the perpendicular axis to that axis Monday or the OG meridian at 72.66 degrees west of longitude. So that's my you know big discovery this last year was how real that is because i can ground truth it from having heights in it um you know as uh, the founder of the worcester range collective and and proposal of the uh, worcester range trail which would connect with the green mountains out here i just at the time was a long distance hiker and um was always thinking about you know how can you get a longer loop for two three night overnight four night overnight um, in an 80 mile run around the Green Mountains, connecting it, you know, along um, a long trail, and then connecting across 
camel's hump out to, uh, you know, where I was a caretaker. I kind of knew the back woods there. So there's like this old run road trail that's not on the maps now. You could use any of the side trails really, but um, that was the one that I had kind of looked at. And then having that connect at the southern base of the Worcester Range, um, riding north uh, up to the Lamoille, we talked about a potential option of uh, a canoe to uh, make a horseshoe uh, backpack kind of experience. Um, you know, partnering up with people like Umi, I think at the time was one of the um, outfitters in that area. But, you know, ultimately the whole concept was to put this 80 mile loop together. And that gave me a unique insight into um, this specific bowl of, of ridges and peaks and calls. And when you look at it on a map, you know, it's just mountains, right? But when you look at it in real life on a not so cloudy day, you know, you can see everything out here is kind of on this plane. I mean, yeah, there's some 4,000 footers like Mansfield and Camel's Home, but um, Ricker Peak is you know, due west from the equinox. So you'd have all of these things that are fairly in line with a, a sight line, and all you would need are the points along a radius, uh, I mean, um, along a, a circle to give you your degrees and your, your radians, if you will, and those would extend out across the continent for surveying. and. Um, you know, just the same way that we can go due east is the Horunda Stoneworks in Old Town, Maine. Uh, you can go due west of us, and it's literally Niagara Falls. So those are um, part of the paths that, you know, I've discovered on the, on the GPS, the Google Earth, the LiDAR analyses. So all of that stuff is going into actual journals, papers for peer review and things like that. But it's also based on the fact that, you know, you've discovered... Um, other scientists that confirm that yes, this was a volcanic reality 1.8 billion years ago, and uh, you know, in that process of understanding how all of what I'm theorizing and feeling come to me through the spirit of uh, whatever it is that has happened in the last year and a half, you know, I've been able to process data in sort of a hypothetical way that I had absolute faith. Right, and that's something where a lot of scientists, people that want to believe what I'm saying, start to like, oh, uh oh, this is crazy town. But it's really not if you if you break it down because it's just a matter of, you know, I I use the example of, um, you know, some uh, football uh, wide receiver catching a pass and you know spiking the ball in the end zone and pointing upwards and 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 crediting God for that. Now what is that, right? Um, Aren't you just doing your job, right? So, but on the flip side, if you feel that you are uniquely aligned in a moment and place to do some magical shit, and you caught a ball that was just absolutely beautiful, and it was like the catch of a century, yeah, celebrate. But like, it's also, you know, however we manifest these things in life, it's the proof is in the pudding. Either there's a touchdown or there's not. You can go to instant review where it's two feet in before, you know, all of that. Is real and I'm doing that here so as I'm looking at it I'm saying you know how do we look at these stoneworks and not recognize the fact that yes this is a very real massively historical um, ancient civilizations work of mastery because we're talking architectural um, brilliance we're talking about alignment with celestial observer, you know, observatory um, things that we, even today, uh, so few of us know anything about this stuff. And I don't even pretend to know a fraction of it. Uh, and I'm constantly relying on our experts and, and other people's journals and papers to get up to speed as fast as I possibly can on how all of this stuff connects and works together. And it does brilliantly. And when you then throw in the arts of stone masonry and carving and uh, design, and it's just what I'm finding is absolutely uniquely stunning um, to think about how massive this work would have been. So um, this is effectively a trailer just to kind of introduce myself and the project um, to share some of the, the links that are going on, the thesis behind how it came to pass. Um, I stumbled into it. I live here at Meadow House. I've lived here for three decades. These rocks always meant something to me. I felt called here for sure. Uh, I couldn't process necessarily how, where, why. Um, I come to Waterbury Center twice before I found this place, but well, once before I found this place. And then I rented this place for many 
many years before buying it. Um, and in the process of buying it, really was emphatic on trying to protect this specific segment. I didn't necessarily know any of this. What I did know was the water, and I was working that protection with some conservation easements with my neighbors, and we did that in, in collaboration, and you know, I think we're on good standing. Um, there was another piece of it with a spring that I thought was defunct that was on the map, and in the deed, um, I had exercised legally uh, what was effectively um, um, you know, taking the property. Uh, because it's an inholding, it's a tiny, tiny inholding of a spring. But it's, it turns out there's a concrete well on my property, which is a well container that holds a spring. So there's technically not a well pump, because that's not allowed in the in the deed. It's just whatever's there is allowed to pass through. Now the question then becomes: Well, if that's the case, why is it that they're trying to bring me into violations of wetlands kinds of things and, and drumming up? A lot of like attacks you know and ways to delay and obfuscate just because somebody else tried to take a wetlands designation to our north of a class two and shift it down Some birds are going crazy over here let's go see what that's about could be a brand new nest or something hey i think ah oh, crow crow is going after the babies Oh, nature can be so hard. Is that raven or is that a crow? Doug, did you see that? All right, well, I'll have to go back to the videotape and see if we got that. That was crazy. There's like five birds flying after that one crow. Anywho, um, excitement in ravines, wow. So yeah, I mean, that's what this is about. We're gonna be video, law, you know, just, documenting the crap out of stuff and as stuff evolves and happens we'll probably have some fun times parties invite people out um you can see benefits that way you can get into the, the spirit as it were um any which way you like but the idea is really to create you know a trailer now and just see how many people really would find this interesting because i could show you this stuff all day long and try to explain stuff to you through social media posts, but ultimately, um, you know, I think we get to that space where if we're going to do this, let's, let, let's accept the fact that it is as massive as it is. Let's accept the fact that it creates a longitude and latitude system for the entirety of the Americas. Like, how freaking cool is that? I feel like we're starting from a space where there's so many people afraid to say, history can't be changed because we're so important as our white... You know, no, it's like there's really important stuff happening here. And I'm not going to suppress it. I'm not going to cancel culture it. And I'm not going to be part of a thing that once did that. This is real. You know, I can prove it in science. I've had Fortune 100 clients that if I got the statistical confidence on any one of the projects I ran for them internationally, I would be beyond ecstatic on every level possible that my work was so defensively sound that I wouldn't have to do any freaking work. And there's only been one project where I've literally had to just scrawl some things top of my head because it was so overwhelmingly obvious in the data that I didn't even worry about the fact that like, you know, and then, yeah, the report followed and everybody was wicked happy. But like, you know, the thing is, it's like when you see the pattern and you see the analysis and you see what it means for the big, big picture, there's nothing that needs to be in the minutia. It's just, it hits and it resonates. And for me, that's this. And I've never had something um, speak to me as loudly, scientifically um, as this. You know, and so that is why I'm making it everything. But I need to make sure that all my partners in the cannabis space, all the work we've done to get licensed and have our brand uh, put through to some SKUs. And, you know, there's, it's a really hard landscape. So I'm not going to be able to advertise uh, to drive business uh, through product and placement of pictures. Right? But like if people want to come here and sample a pre-roll, that's fine. You know, and that's like one thing that we can do. Is this designed to circumvent rules or just be a marketing tactic? Fuck no. But if 
we're doing this for the honesty of trying to document something, right? You know, that's what we've been at for a while now. And um, I say we, dog and I, he's over there barking. And uh, yeah, I do think that the recording studio needs to present a product. Um, and that product is going to be something that hopefully we can get people to you know, pay 20 bucks for, or like maybe it's uh, somebody wants to kick in 150 and then they get a night to stay at Meta House or something. You know, we could do different things like that down the road. I don't know where it, where it starts now, um, but, you know, because we're going to have a recording studio functioning where we're going to need, you know, the space for bands to set up. But for me, I think it's going to have to be a little bit more out of the gates focused on creating this this experience and some kind of media presentation maybe webisodes something that feels engaging to people that oh at the end of it you maybe you know donate something and you get uh you know the the not so much the link to the document that you could probably get online for free in this economy anyway but you also maybe get like a ticket to a party or something um so yeah i guess this is just kind of a free think um, as far as what we're doing and how to get people engaged, um, I think it's one of those things where a number of people are stoked to keep it moving forward. You know, we've got people, you know, deacons in the kinship out uh, in the World Poker Tour and others that are <laughs> like my dog, stoked and happy and singing. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll get some people up on stage here as well. And... You know, whether it's this stage here, which we're doing a little fix up to make it easier to get out there. Um, and, you know, some folks just kind of gathered in the uh, stoneworks. That seems like a fun, a fun little thing. I mean, it's much more manageable from, you know, an archaeological perspective here than if we set up in the, uh, on the West Deck um, for a big population kind of uh, party. But that's kind of it for now, and I guess I'm going to just leave it there and get to the work involved that it takes to get this all going. But I wanted to share those ideas um, and just see what we can do to get people um, not only excited to like support us with money, but to actually show up and volunteer and help dig. This isn't rocket science, but it means that like a lot of careful work has to go into it. Um, and then once you start to know things, like you start to realize, wow, that's pretty cool, I'm, you know privilege to be doing this thing where I get to extract these like chiseled perfectly pyramidal pyramid like shapes of rocks out of these crevices of these things that turn into isosceles triangles of like springs and we've done a hundred feet linear of a 1400 foot long effigy so there's just so much work ahead um, and that's not even calculating square footage of what has to get worked on so uh, if you want to send your kids, uh, your teen, well, maybe uh, young adults with the cannabis, we might have to make it legal. I don't know. Because uh, I just consume too much. I don't want to have the, the worries of people saying, oh, you can't do that with kids around. Um, that's kind of a challenge. All right, well, we'll figure that one out. But, you know, as far as if people want to have uh, their kids get involved and learn some archaeology, we could absolutely figure out ways to do stuff where no cannabis is on scene. Um, I can make it work. <laughs> so uh, grateful for everybody um, that wants to be part of this. And I'll just uh, say thank you again. And um, can't wait to, to make this happen and have folks come and check it out for themselves. All right, peace.